Hello there everyone, KCR Jones here, and welcome to, I guess, the second episode of How to Build a Modular Railroad. Uh, and this one is going to be a little bit different to uh, the formula of the following videos. I want to get something out soon. Um, the show is in about two weeks from me, or filming tonight. So I do have to get this whole thing ready, and I will throw up a couple pictures on screen of the completed table sections as of for now i have yet to put the felt on them that will be the next episode i really wanted this one to be about building the tables and i might as well explain real quick um i had the plywood pre-cut but a friend of mine um lended me his miter saw which i used to cut the two by fours in the pictures you're seeing and we pretty much got most of the table sections done already and they are all really up nice and to shape and they all fit together pretty well and to just today a box came in from train world which was an order of track and wires that is spare track and wires for this project because i'm gonna have to do some wiring and on my layout i will i guess i can show you here it's in a little bit of distress the ceiling is leaking which is why you see stuff there in the ceiling like that the wiring on the layout is simple i can take that apart but for this modular railroad to make it really nice and easy and quick I wanted to get specific track sections uh, wired. And especially if you remember the track plan, I'm gonna have a passing siding. And I wanna use that as a staging track. And one cool thing about O-Scale is the way that you can insulate track. A lot of people don't do this and it's super simple. I wanted to say that I have my demonstration here. It is very cheap, I know. Um, but of course, most of you know, this is my workbench. And to those who is the first time, welcome aboard. Um, but I picked up some of these toggle switches on Amazon. This is what they look like in the bag. I will put a link in the description. They were like $5 each on Amazon. Five or six. Nice heavy duty toggle switches. Um, it's your standard single pull, double throw switch. It uses both polarities though, and I will go over that in just a moment, but I'm only using this for the hot polarity. Well, let's say that for the layout running, you can see this caboose here, is lighting and the New York Atlantic one is not. This would be the main here. It would go around, as you know, and I want to have this section isolated. If you just plug it into the rest of the line, connect it up, you will know that um, if you haven't insulated it yet, that track will be active. So the trick is this track right now is receiving power. It is receiving power through the common or ground. These outer rails are powered, the inner rail is not. And I have not yet done it because I just got them today and as you can tell, these are brand new fast track six uh, sections and wires. And I'm not gonna insulate it in the way of insulating the outer rails like most times you do with accessories. I'm only gonna be insulating the inner rail to get rid of that hot polarity going through. And what instead we will do is we will have a wire, which I will show you once I demonstrate, coming off the main, coming off of this hot, going into this switch and it's a little bit of a stiff switch oh, there we go so it's a little hard to do it with one hand but there you go that's pretty much how it works it's so simple you just it's just like that the only thing i'm controlling is the hot power going to it and the trick for this or why to do it is to build trains on this track while trains are going around the outer instead of having to turn off the layout and all that i could put cars on the line it won't short out if I do this. It won't short until I turn it on. Then it's ready to go. And for the ease of this modular portable railroad, this is so efficient. It's such a simple idea. It doesn't cost much. Like I said, these switches are about five, six dollars each. These are real heavy duty, by the way. There are cheaper ones. I just wanted to spoil myself and get some nice ones. Uh, and I could do both polarities, although I'm only using the hot. And I guess I will demonstrate that now. Let me turn this off. Turn off the track power so the lights go off. And pretty much, like I said, this is a demo. The real one wouldn't have this um, ground wire going in. But all I did was, I didn't even mess with the track piece itself, besides the fact I'm going to have to take off the joiners for the hot rail only when it comes time. It's a little bit of a mess, but... We have one wire going into the switch on the, the uh, open end. 
And on the closed end, we have another wire coming in, which is this one. And that's pretty much just going into here. It's taking the power from the power track. And this switch basically determines if we're gonna send power or if we're gonna cut off power. Once you turn it on, it brings power to the line. And of course, this would be our main power here going to the transformer. Like I said, this is just for the point of the video. When it's actually running on the layout or built on the layout, we will not need this extra wire going specifically just to that track. If you knew all this, then good for you. If you didn't, I honestly am not surprised that a lot of people don't know how to do this. This hobby is very complex. There's so many aspects to it. And this isn't just a Lionel Fast Track thing, by the way. This is for any three rail, O scale, AC power. This, this works for all. I'm only using Fast Track because that's what I use. I wanted to specify that no, I am using one of the black wires, which is used for the ground or outer rails on the inner track. For those who probably know this, this is how it should be with these fast track joiners or basically in the hobby together. Red is associated with hot, black is associated with common or ground. I am using this because it is the one other half of the wire is this piece that comes off of the switch. The color of this wire does not matter. It is a reference for you putting the track together to know which is hot and which is ground. Because I'm using this does not mean it won't work, however. I know that this wire is coming off of the hot and is only going into this switch which is then going out of what people would use the hot or the red one going to the hot rail. Because I know this and it's only being used for a switch, it doesn't really matter. You could also do it the other way around. But before anyone yells at me that I'm doing that it looks wrong like that, this is only trying I'm only trying to please myself here. If you don't like it then well buy another wire that'll cost you more money versus using what you can use. The other thing is the actual, um, the wires themselves, it's, it's a jumble for this video. That's because I threw this together real quick to put something out because I'm working on other things right now and I wanted to get something out and the tables are not yet finished or anything. So I didn't want to show them until they at least had their felt on, but I will just demonstrate one more time. Those are the lights on. If I flip the switch, it's going to be picky with me. There it goes. There they go. That's both tracks powered with the hot used by this switch and the common, of course, getting the common currents or the common uh, current. So it works because I know it will work like this. When it comes to a proper wiring diagram with using all sorts of other stuff, you may not use this technique. However, for my technique in this video and how I'm gonna execute, that's how it's just gonna be. So if you enjoyed this quick video, then uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up. This isn't the best of the channel. If you wanna see some good stuff, check out the Oskel Collection series, or in a couple weeks of due time, you can see the completed layout in operation and in person. I'll have a link in the description as well to show um, the shows that I'm taking this layout to, if you'd be interested in actually seeing it. Uh, like I said, this was just more of a, a wiring demo just for today and also about the new tables. Um, but otherwise, the next video should be about applying felt to the tables and also showing the track plan in full swing or trying to go for it at least. Uh, but yeah, guys, if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It'll help out a lot and you'll stay up to date with the uh, channel and new episodes and other stuff like that. But until then, I'm going on way too much here, so. Hope well, you have a good day, everyone. Um, stay tuned for the next episode soon and some G and O um, scale videos for Halloween next week. All right, take care. Casey out.